Welcome back, Gadgeteers. As you know, Fedora 31 has been released, and there is a Fedora 31 workstation version as well as a Fedora 31 server edition. The version that we'll be talking about today is the workstation edition. So you have a couple of possibilities when you're going to download it. One is if you have Windows or a Mac, you can download the Fedora Media Writer program, which will allow you to use a thumb drive, a USB drive, to create either a Windows version or a version to boot up on your Mac. Otherwise, you can also use the Fedora 31 DVD ISO, which is what I usually use. Of course, I'm already on Linux, so that makes the most sense for me. At a minimum, you do need a 2 gigabyte USB flash drive and, of course, the Fedora Media Writer program. So using the flash drive, you end up creating a live version of Fedora so you can actually boot up and check out the features and see if there's anything there that you think is worthwhile to do an upgrade for. Keep in mind that if you're on Fedora 29 right now, you have about one more month of support although I really expect Fedora to continue security updates for at least a while. Fedora 30 on the other hand you've got a good seven eight months of support so if you are on Fedora 30 you're okay if you want to wait a little while and we're going to talk about the reasons why you might want to wait a bit. So if we take a look at my system here There we go, make it a little larger. If I do a uname-r, you can see I'm on 5.2.11-100 of the Fedora 29 kernel. So, um, this system is definitely eligible for an update. I would probably use the upgrade tool on the command line, which you've seen me do before, to go ahead and do an update. And as you know from my previous video, I successfully did a Fedora Core 28 to 30 update and jumped uh, 29. So I'm thinking with this one, probably I'll wait a little while longer and I will do a Fedora Core 29 to 31 jump. So let's have a look at some of the features that are there. Let me roll back up. This article is from FOSS and author is Ankush Das, and I hope I have that pronunciation right. If not, forgive me. Mr. Das makes a good point that, you know, Fedora 30, we've been running for about six months now, and 31 is, is available to download. But what do you get on Fedora 31? And actually what I'm seeing, it's what you don't get anymore that's most important, not what you get. First of all, GNOME 3.34, actually GNOME 3.34 is the way to pronounce it. There are some minor update changes, um, less clicks to get to different features in GNOME. Uh, in the app drawer you can actually create folders which I think is kind of cool I like to be able to do that on my Apple smartphone and you can do that of course in Android so that's a pretty nice feature is it worth upgrading for well that's hard to say so let's see let's cruise over here and have a quick look at more detail. So we talked about the drag and drop icons. Uh, calendar manager is improved. So if you use calendar a lot, it's supposed to work much better. And I have used calendar and it's a decent application. I actually like it. Uh, background settings have been changed. The funny thing is, uh, I mean, saves you at least one mouse click. So I, I wouldn't consider, you know, for Fedora 31 with 3.34 of GNOME like critical to get. And of course I use the KDE desktop, so it's not quite as important for me. 
Uh, you can rearrange the search options and results and you can decide what comes first. I kind of like that. All right, so that's GNOME 3.34. Now, unfortunately, Fedora is officially dropping 32-bit support at this point, so you will not be able to get a 32-bit version of Fedora 31. And although that doesn't concern me too much, but it does essentially mean that an entire group of computers will no longer be able to benefit from Fedora. The other factor is that there's still going to be some 32-bit packages out there and uh, some of them are Steam and Wine which allegedly it will continue to work but don't expect great 32-bit support. So I'm concerned about that, that we're going to have some 32-bit packages that may become more buggy or problematic and I hope that's not the case. The Docker package was removed from Fedora 31. Now there is a tool that's been replaced called the Mobi Engine so if you still want to uh, create Docker apps then you're gonna have to use Mobi Engine. Well I shouldn't say have to but should. So there have been some updated packages. One is glibc or glibc, depending on how you want to say it, Node.js, and probably more important is Python 3. So Python 2 is reaching end of life, and one of the things that Fedora does well is, is kind of force the hand of developers and say, look, you know, Python 2 is end of life. We can't just wait to the last second to make the changeover. So they're going to push Python 3 now. Uh, I was reading some other articles about the Fedora 31 updates and they were saying that maybe by switching to Python 3 it would uh, increase the speed with which coders adapt to Python 3. I'm not so sure of that. So if that's something that's very important to you. I would definitely consider holding off. Uh, don't update to Fedora 31. Continue using Fedora 30. Now, something on the official change log that I like to check out. A um, couple of things going on. One, Python 2 package removal. I'm sure you could install it if you needed to, but it's a little bit concerning. Uh, disable root password login in SSH. That actually makes sense to me. I'm not even sure why that was permitted in the first place. That's that's definitely a weakness, and that makes sense to me. Uh, C library version is updated. Oh, let's see. Anything else that I would say is very important. We talked about the i686 repositories. RPM is getting an update and it also uses a different compression algorithm uh, to compress the RPM packages. Right here, switch RPMs to ZSTD compression. I don't see any talk about it in here, but they are going to start using X Wayland. And as I understand it, X Wayland is a software package that will allow applications that call X specifically instead of Wayland and are dependent on X, uh, they can actually run X Wayland instead as necessary and then when the application is done calling the X desktop uh, they will, X Wayland will terminate. Again, that's the third reason why I would consider waiting on Fedora 31. X Wayland is definitely not, I'm not going to say it's not ready for prime time because that wouldn't be fair, but I feel like it's not quite uh, time yet to go to Fedora 31 because it's just, I won't say untested either because it went through beta, but you may experience problems with uh, X applications that have to have the X desktop in order to work. So I should say X server desktop. So consider that um, it could be a problem. So we've got a couple of different reasons there why you might want to consider holding off on upgrading, upgrading to Fedora 31. 
Now, of course, the first thing I like to do, and let's see if my, yes. So Fedora Workstation Live is downloaded. Before I upgrade to the most current version of Fedora, not only do I like to wait, and according to some of the articles I've read, they say to wait a couple weeks. I like to wait maybe one or two months, especially with this version that's cutting out uh, support for 32-bit code, upgrading to Python 3, and a couple other things that make me a little nervous, uh, is to go ahead and use, if I can find it here, <clears throat> VirtualBox. And let's go ahead and create a new machine. So we'll do new and we'll call this Fedora 31. And memory size, well, I've got 64 gigs in this system, so I think I'll go ahead and give it, oh, I suppose four is good enough for what we'll be doing. And we will create a virtual hard disk. And we're gonna use the virtual box disk image. And I do like to do dynamically allocated, so it's only as you need the storage. We don't create a file here at 123 gigabytes, for example. We, we only create, we expand this virtual disk as needed. So I'm gonna click Create. And if I fire this up, it'll say, hey, by the way, your virtual disk drive is empty and we're going to go ahead and put a disk in it if you will so if I go to downloads I have Fedora Workstation Live and I'm going to do start now a couple of things notice how small the screen is that's because I'm using a 4k so 4k monitor so I'm gonna go to machine or was it view yeah so if we go to view and then virtual screen one we can scale it up so I'm gonna try 200% now nah, still too small let's go to auto scaled output not quite sure what that is let's see what happens I'm thinking that maybe okay it will scale the output. Nope, not really. Might work after we get the tools installed. So let's do 300%. So it looks like it just auto booted into the live CD. It's actually checking the media first. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape because if it doesn't work, it's just not gonna work because I downloaded the ISO and if there's anything wrong with the ISO and it can't boot up I'll just go ahead and download it again okay so that took a minute now I think what I'll do is let's see if we can change the view and we'll go down to 250 I know that's probably a little small for you so let me go up a little bit I want to make sure it's big enough to where you guys can see it. So I don't want to try Fedora. I actually want to do the install. And I will click continue. And the destination. Now I only have one virtual hard drive, so that makes it easy. All I have to do is click done. You'll see the drive already has the check mark there. And we can begin the installation. Now keep in mind this particular, this, let me rephrase, the default version of Fedora 31 is GNOME. So if you wanted to install another desktop like KDE or whatever you choose to install, you would actually need to do that after the fact. So this is taking a little time to install. One of the things I always forget to do, if you go up to machine and then settings and go to system <clears throat> and then processor, 
you'll see that it looks like I'm only using one CPU. In other words, I'm only using one core out of the 12 threads that I have available. So this is a six core physical Xeon processor with up to 12 threads. And unfortunately, I always forget to do this. I prefer to go ahead and ramp it up a little bit, maybe give it two or three. And so if you notice that things are going a little slow, that could be the reason why. Just imagine it's kind of, I know it's still a fairly powerful core running on this 64 bit, or we should, honestly, I don't know if it's 64 or 128 bit Xeon processor, uh, but it's only one. So in some ways, it's like running it on an older CPU. The host system that I'm running this virtual machine on is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1. It has a 6-core Xeon processor in it. It has 64 gigabytes of RAM. I've actually upgraded it from 32. And it has two 1 terabyte SSDs. Okay, the installation is completed. It actually took considerably more time than it usually does, which is kind of disappointing, but uh, it is, of course, a different version, so there may be some, well, there are many package updates. So let's go ahead and shut this down. I'm going to power it off. And go back into Oracle Virtual Machine, go into the settings of this virtual machine, system, processor, and I think we're going to increase this to three. Let's do four. Let's be brave. What's the worst that could happen? Um, let's check acceleration. Yes, it's enabled. Motherboard. What about display? Hmm. BMS VGA. I don't know precisely what the difference is here but we want to install the tools anyway so I'll just leave that alone for right now and we'll fire back up the virtual machine and now oh yes I still have that installed so let's I still have the uh, workstation so I'm going to remove it from the drive and we'll go ahead and issue a reset and now it should boot up All right, the typical welcome screen comes up. Let's see if they've changed anything on it. Not really. Uh, I'm going to turn off location services for right now. I am not going to connect any accounts, and we'll create up a create a login here really quick. That is the same welcome screen, so nothing really different. And of course, the getting started, everything's identical to Fedora 30. So one thing I do like about Fedora, um, changes are, are evolutionary, not a revolution. So it's kind of in that way, like uh, Mac OS, you know, users get used to a certain style and doing things a certain way and luckily they don't change too fast. So let's go ahead into our terminal and I'm gonna add this to favorites, you know me. Before I do that though, I think what I'll do is go to devices and insert the guest edition CD image. We need to download it because we don't have it. And yes, please download it.
You know, I've seen this many, many times. I'm going to do one refresh, but this is a problem that I've seen several times. Anyway, what I am going to do is become root. And I want to do a DNF update. And I want you to have a look at this. Keep in mind that Fedora 31 has only been out well under a month about three weeks so let's get a look at how many updates are needed and give you an idea of how fluid and how fast things change on a Linux distribution okay so we already have 596 megabytes 270 packages that are going to be upgraded seven new packages that are going to be installed we have of course the kernel xorg x11 server is going to be installed or updated uh, Z Live SSD SC Linux policy chemu it goes on and on and on so quite a bit of software is going to be installed I'm gonna go ahead and do that this is usually the first step that I do and while I'm doing that I'm gonna see if I can find uh, an ISO for the VirtualBox guest editions and see if I can use that to install the guest editions. All right, while the updates are going through, I went ahead and changed the display resolution to 1900 by 1200 and scale 200%, and then I went and changed the virtual screen resolution to 125% scaling. I may try, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, 150 percent yeah that'll work great um, that way you can see everything and we get a little bit more screen real estate while we're working all right what I'm doing now is grabbing the guest editions as you can see I did the same thing I did before on my virtual machine it's not gonna let me show it to you um, I click devices and then insert guest editions and it said that I needed to download it so when it prompted me with downloading this particular dialog box came up and I know that it's just gonna fail again so it actually gives you the URL so I click the URL and it asks me which application do I want to do the download with and of course I said Firefox so I'm gonna save the file instead of actually opening it into my downloads folder and once it downloads what I can do is cruise back to my virtual machine and let's get the right one up here normally I would just go to devices and optical drive and go ahead and quote unquote insert the optical drive which of course would be the uh, guest editions but I'm gonna wait because I want this to finish I don't want to disrupt things and have to try to do a reboot or whatever while updates are proceeding and this is gonna take a while so what I'll do is go ahead and let this finish I'll get a reboot done and then when we come back we'll install guest editions alright well while we're waiting I did find one of the package updates that's going to be done so if you go back to the release change set you can look at the self-contained changes and one of them is Firefox will now use Wayland by default so instead of using the x11x server now Firefox will use Wayland by default on GNOME um, otherwise we have to use the compatibility layer for the x11 server and of course whenever you have to add in another layer it does cause some complications so hopefully running directly on Wayland will solve that problem if it doesn't you could install the Firefox X11 package you could then use X11 server to actually serve up whichever desktop environment you want do keep in mind though that the Firefox Wayland is not going to be used in KDE Plasma or Sway other uh, compositors so 
you probably will not have it enabled by default. So if you have a problem with Firefox in GNOME and then you go into KDE and you don't, that should give you an indicator that it might have to do with Firefox running in a Wayland session. Okay, I'm surprised the updates got done so fast, so we're going to go ahead and issue a reboot. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and install the VBox Guest Editions. I am going to run the terminal. I don't know if I'll need it, but let's go to Devices, Optical Drives, choose Disk Image, VBox Guest Editions that we downloaded, and we'll click Open. Hopefully this will actually run and I won't have to do it in the command line. Let's see what happens. So far so good. Let's authenticate. Good. So it has a previous version of the additions and let's go ahead and remove those. We want the most updated versions that we can get. Uh, we're missing our kernel headers. All right, let's cruise over here. Become root again, mainly because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to type in sudo in front of everything and then my password. And let's go ahead and do a DNF list kernel asterisk. Seems to me like there's more than just the headers I need. Um, I already have modules. So unfortunately you can see why people who complain about Linux and how difficult it is are to some extent correct because Let's go ahead and do sudo dnf update and see if there's any updates. You know, if you're running, say, Mac OS, of course, if something goes wrong, it's, it's really difficult to fix, but things going wrong are rare, where we've run into several different things that cause us to have to go into the command line and make changes and that's frustrating. So let's do DNF list kernel dash headers asterisk. I just want to see what version we have installed right now. And since we're waiting we'll start another terminal and we'll do a new window and we'll do uname dash r which gives us our current kernel version 5.3.9 and we're hoping when it shows us kernel headers that they match. And they don't. What is the deal here? So we have a newer kernel, but the headers aren't available yet. Well, looking on the official Fedora Updates website, there was a kernel 539 and kernel tools, tools 539 that was updated and that was five days ago and I don't see the actual kernel header package if you look here on 536 we have kernel 536 plus headers and one more if we click it let's see what it tells us so we could do the, do the advisory installation but that would actually if I'm not mistaken, go back on my kernel, which I would prefer, but I've n only once downgraded a kernel, and I actually use the RPM packages to do that. Anyway, back at activities, let's have a look at the dock here, and here's all our programs. So presumably we can go ahead and create A folder very simple you basically just hover an icon over another one and it will create the folder automatically and we are now in the folder can I rename it yes 
and we renamed it and of course it put it in alphabetical order is that useful eh, depends you may say no it depends who you are by default what tools do we have installed well they actually all fit right here so we've got boxes calendar cheese which I don't think is very useful local address book I'm not a big fan of the local address book documents scanners I don't have a scanner LibreOffice let's see how it looks by default So it looks like it's still the default toolbar toolbar style. Uh, let's go there. Let's do view user interface standard tabbed and tabbed compact. I think most people at this point are used to the tabbed style because of Office. I could be wrong. If you're strictly a, a LibreOffice user, you might not like the tab style. Um, actually, I don't want to print. Overall, though, I think I've gotten to the point now where I do like the tabbed interface. Image, gallery. Now, I'm going to close that and go into Activities and let's open calc and so we would have to go to each one of the applications and change the interface to tabbed if we wanted to do that not a big deal really what else do we have by default rhythm box software updates uh, text editor, some utilities in their own little folder, system monitor, the usual stuff that you get when you install Fedora. So a clean install of Fedora does not include KDE or any of the other apps that I'm used to having like KDE Desktop, Kden Live. Um, so all that would have to be installed let's check out the system right now so we gave it four cores and it's doing about 20 percent or excuse me about 10 percent of those four cores not too bad memory 1.7 gigs out of what I give it four all right so usually what I do now is go ahead and install all the packages that I use and do all the updates. So if we cruise over to fast gadgets info, we did the update already. I usually do the group install of the KDE environment. So all I have to do is bring up the command line. And we're off and running, and it's 1.2 gigs, which is pretty big. Now, I'm not going to go through everything I normally do here, uh, but I do walk through this. I like to install the RPM Fusion Free and Non Free repositories. That way, I can get other software that's not available on the Fedora official repositories. So here is some of the software that I actually go through and install. And you may or may not need this. If you're not on a laptop, of course, don't install TLP. 
and you may or may not have this installed by default um, which is support for USB thumb drives. I'm pretty sure at this point in this version it's probably available already. And you may want to install Steam. You do need the RPM Fusion I believe repositories in order to install Steam. And of course if you have certain video files like the move video file uh, which is Mac OS or Apple then you may want to go ahead and install some of these plugins for that. So it's going to go ahead and do the installation of KDE Desktop. We'll talk more in future videos about KDE Desktop but based on what I'm seeing from Fedora 31 right now I personally feel like I will be waiting so I may update my laptop to Fedora 30 and just be ready for Fedora 31 which I could do in maybe two to three weeks. Anyway if you enjoyed this video like and subscribe if you really enjoyed it consider dropping a comment and you could always join me on Patreon link will be in the end screen here and maybe give me a dollar a month to buy some coffee. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.